Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren Ross. I'm an associate professor in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department at the University of Maine, and I'm really thrilled uh, about this Fulbright uh, project, about this opportunity that I have, and um, I'm excited to share with you a little bit about my project today. So it is in collaboration with the University of Los Lagos and the Centro IMAR um, that is located in Puerto Montt, Chile, and uh, the topic of the project and the title is Estuarine Exchange Flow and High Latitudes Implications for the Transport of Waterborne Material. Um, in the background, you can see a satellite image of Ray Lankavi Fjord, um, which is really nice because you can actually see material being transported within this fjord system. And that's gonna be one of the focus areas of my research. And I'll get into that a little bit more in just a minute. So first let's talk about um, why estuaries are important, estuaries and fjord systems are, are important areas. So I love this uh, simple cartoon diagram of uh, an estuarine system. Uh, this was developed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And, um, and you can really see all of the different or many of the different types of activities that happen within estuaries. Um, one important example is that they do offer habitat and breeding grounds for shorebirds, marine mammals, and also juvenile fish and shellfish. Um, estuaries contain ma major navigation channels and shipping ports, so it's also uh, important for the large human population that lives on the shorelines. I believe the statistic is that 40% of the um, population in the U.S. lives on uh, a coastline. And estuaries and fjords also can house aquaculture activities. So uh, we can see that these systems are um, really important both ecologically and economically. And so water quality, understanding water quality and having good water quality is very important in um, estuaries and fjords. So the overall goal of my uh, research team at the University of Maine is to support decision-making related to water quality. And we focus on the exchange of salty water from the ocean and fresh water that's delivered um, into estuaries from rivers and how those different types of water, fresh and salty, interact and mix and um, have implications for things like hydrody the hydrodynamics or circulation patterns that you find within estuaries and fjords, and also the biogeochemical processes um, in these systems. And that's because um, all of these, all, all of the uh, sort of implications of exchange flow, their impact on um, biology, chemistry, and also physics have implications for the onset and transport of uh, materials such as harmful algal blooms, as you can see in the picture below. Uh, pollution, which can include bacterial and microplastic pollution is just two examples. Um, sediments, so sediment can be transported into the uh, coastal environment and also salt. So um, now with sea level rise, we have to be more and more concerned about um, how salt water can move upstream in rivers and potentially contaminate potable uh, water sources. So my um, research team studies sort of all of these different facets um, related to water quality and trying to understand the exchange of river and ocean water and how it influences the transport of all of these different things. Um, but for this Fulbright project, I'm gonna be focusing on harmful algal blooms. And why harmful algal blooms? Um, well, they have direct implications for um, public health and safety um, through consumption of contaminated uh, shellfish meats that would con potentially contain, contain toxic algae or a biotoxin that is developed um, within that algae. Um, and they also have big economic cons consequences for aquaculture. And uh, the, both the frequency and the intensity of harmful algal bloom events are increasing at a global scale. And um, uh, this is the, apparent in both Chile and in the United States. And um, they are both afflict, um, afflicted by the same types of harmful algal bloom uh, species as well. Uh, and in particular, the um, southern reaches or Patagonia in Chile has 
you know, a lot of aquaculture, which I'm going to talk about in just one second, and the northeast north northeastern part of the United States does as well. So we have some uh, links here between harmful algal blooms and aquaculture. So going back to uh, the study area for uh, this project, this is the Los Lagos region of Chile or Reilancavi Fjord. So it's located in the northern reaches of Chilean Patagonia. You can see it denoted by the um, yellow square here. And then a zoom in on that area is the larger figure behind. So um, this system is Reilancavi Fjord and every single one of these little red, yellow, or green um, rectangular shapes that you see is a lease site for a aquaculture farm, either salmon or mussel. Um, so this region, the Los Lagos region of Chile, hosts 90% of the salmon aquaculture in Chile. And from Ray Lancavi Fjord, they get um, nearly all of the wild mussel seed that supports the entire mussel aquaculture uh, industry in the country. So it's an extremely important area for aquaculture. And it has been affected by harmful algal blooms. So you can see the um, sort of brownish tint to the water is a harmful algal bloom present in the fjord. And you can see a salmon aquaculture farm here in the background um, that's right in the middle of it. Uh, and there have been really large mass mortalities of um, salmon due to the harmful algal blooms and the um, shellfish aquaculture mussel does not um, feature these uh, mass mortalities, but rather the shellfish ingests the harmful algae and retains the toxins. And then if that meat is ingested by a human, um, it could be potentially fatal or cause some really serious effects. So here you can see that it is a big issue um, in this region. And what is thought right now is that uh, climate variability is driving a, a decline in river flow um, that is exacerbating these harmful algal blooms. This is one, one theory. So this little figure that I'm showing um, on the x-axis shows the year from 2004 to 2020. And on the y-axis, it's the river discharge or the amount of fresh water that is put into uh, the fjord. And essentially it's an anomaly in river discharge. So anything above zero means that that year, like in 2006, there was a um, above average river discharge in the Puello River. And anything that is negative indicates that there was a deficit, so less than average river discharge. And the important thing is looking at the trend, this red dashed line here that's showing an overall decline in river discharge. Um, and so this decline in river discharge is going to decrease the amount of fresh water and so that's going to change how the fresh water from rivers and the salty water from the oceans mix and interact, um, which could be a reason why we're seeing worse harmful algal blooms. Um, and that's what we're gonna try and figure out. Uh, I wanted to also point out that my host institution is located right on Ray Longkavi um, Sound. That's where the Centro Imar, that's a part of Ulagos um, is located. So we're gonna be uh, directly doing our research right here. So I'm going to go to Chile to, to try and, um, you know, learn from my colleagues um, and share knowledge uh, between what they've been facing in Chile and then what we are facing here in the U.S. and bring back some of the um, knowledge to colleagues and uh, researchers here. So my Fulbright scholarship um, is going to start on August 27th and it's going to go through January 11th of 2024. As I mentioned, I'm working with the University of Los Lagos in the Centro Imar that's a part of the university. Um, my host is going is Dr. Ivan Perez Santos, who I have a longstanding um, uh, relationship with uh, academically. And we're going to be also working with uh, IFOP as well. So with some data and model sharing. So um, what Dr. Perez Santos and I uh, had agreed um, whenever we were talking about this project is that there are an overlap of issues facing aquaculture industries in uh, Chile 
or Chilean Patagonia and the United States. And so we're hoping that this collaboration or a collaboration could aid in the development of more accurate predictions of harmful algal blooms in the management and mitigation of their economic and ecologic consequences. So the overarching research goal for this project is to, of course, um, establish this long, long-standing research relationship between Dr. Perez Santos, the University of Los Lagos, and my research group here at the University of Maine. And this collaboration is going to be based on the idea that we want to improve the prediction of material transport, focusing on the material harmful algal blooms, um, by understanding fjord and estuary exchange flows or physical processes and linking that to biogeochemical processes. The teaching goal is going to be to co-develop course curriculum that's based on our collaborative research findings and uh, with with the idea that this curriculum can be used by Chilean researchers and teachers, and also it will be brought back to the University of Maine and incorporated into graduate level courses on coastal engineering. So I do have some specific research um, and teaching objectives for the project that I'm gonna go through now. Um, the first research objective is to quantify exchange flow. So remember that's the mi mixing of fresh and salt water and how that contributes to circulation patterns in the Los Lagos region. And I'm gonna use both data and two years of numerical model output, co considering both the dry and a wet season, since the, that is thought to be the reason um, <clears throat> behind having uh, worse and worse harmful algal bloom events. So this nice figure here on the, the right shows the model domain that we're using. Um, this is in collaboration with um, researchers at IFOP. Uh, we already have um, some of the model output in hand to start being processed. Um, and you can see that we include the Ray Longkavi sound, and then here's a zoom in on Ray Longkavi Fjord. So it's really a beautiful model that has already been well validated by our colleagues, which is awesome. The second research goal is to link the exchange flow to hydrographic and biogeochemical properties. So um, we're going to try and link the, the exchange to dissolved oxygen, um, pH, um, you know, salinity, temperature, and other features in the fjord to try and establish links between what could be exacerbating these blooms. The third research objective is going to be to extrapolate what we find um, to coastal main estuaries. And then the teaching goal is to, of course, co-develop co the course curriculum with Dr. Perez Santos that's based on the uh, research activities above and our findings. So the project deliverables include a peer-reviewed publication on the results of our collaborative research um, study on the Los Lagos region, a uh, presentation at the Physics of Estuaries and Coastal Seas Conference that will be held in September of 2024 in Bordeaux, France. The dissemination of the developed curriculum through Centro IMAR Observatorio Marino Relancavi or OMARE um, website repository. To incorporate the curriculum into coastal engineering graduate courses at the University of Maine and to continue our collaboration between the University of Los Lagos and the University of Maine. And this will include uh, researcher exchanges and um, uh, research project collaborations. So in preparation for my visit. Um, I just want to talk about some of the activities that I've been doing to get ready. And I did uh, actually host Dr. Perez Santos at the University of Maine in June 2023. So he was just here. Um, and we have been working together, um, collecting data in Maine estuaries so that we can, uh, whenever I go to Chile, establish links between the two systems. He also worked a lot with my uh, research group, with some of my PhD students as well. Um, we've identified the years that we're going to investigate. So this includes a dry year, which is 2016, which featured industry collapsing salmon uh, mortality uh, in the salmon aquaculture industry and in 2018, which is a more typical year. So this figure is just showing the uh, month of the year. The red bars indicate the river very variability in river discharge, let's say for January of 2018. The blue is the variation for January of 2016, and so on for each of the year they each of the months of the year. And you can see that the blue bars are much lower than the red bars, particularly during the season where we would expect to see harmful algal blooms. Um, 
and we've started post-processing some of the data to optimize uh, my time spent in Chile. Um, and right, so that was it, my brief uh, overview. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions, and I'm super excited to be there in a few weeks. Okay, thank you.